today we will take a crash course in Unreal Engine. If you go to Epic Games Launcher and go to Unreal Engine, let's go to Library, you will have your engine versions, then your projects and the vault. From the engine versions, if you don't have anything here, you need to click on the plus menu. I can click on install. Once you set the location, you need to go to options. And from here, don't forget to turn off the target platforms that you don't develop for. My download size is 15 gigabytes. So if you have three or four installations and you have these enabled on all these guys by default, that's 80 gigabytes. Once you disable these, simply now click on apply and then click on install. When you click on launch, Unreal Project Browser will open. You will see your recent projects and then you will see templates. You will see templates in games, virtual production, architecture, product visualization, simulation. You can start from these templates. For the sake of this tutorial series, I start new project from games blank. You can set the project location. You can set the project name. You can set the project default settings on Blueprint or C++. You can select the quality preset if you want the starter content in your project. And if you have an RTX card or a card that supports ray tracing, you can enable this, then click on Create. When you open Unreal Engine for the first time, what we can see here is the Unreal Editor. The editor is divided into multiple sections. The biggest section here is our 3D viewport. Think of this as a window to the worlds you're going to create. From here, you can fly around. On the top, we have the top toolbar, and this one contains some important buttons that we click often, so that's why they are on top, they are easy to access. On the right, we have the world outliner, or the outliner, and what you can see here, it's a list of the actors. For example, if we select this actor, it will be highlighted here, and this is the skylight. The outliner will contain everything you see in the 3D viewport. And as you can see, every time you click somewhere, we have below the outliner, the details panel, and this is context sensitive. This means every time you click on an actor, and that actor maybe is the player start, it has some settings, that actor maybe is the sky atmosphere, it has some different settings that are related to the sky, and so on. So we decide to make a new map. We press Ctrl N, and we click on empty level. We have something called content drawer or the content browser. You can press control space to open that. On the left, you're gonna see a list of the folders you have inside your project. Inside this folder, there are folders and inside these folders, there are small folders and then we have assets. And when you click on any of these folders and from here, you can click and drag to start adding things to your world. Now, for some reason, we can see this guy. That's good, it's dark resistance. But other way to add things to your project is by going to the button here, quickly add to the project in the top toolbar. And we can go to shapes and I'm gonna add a cube. And that cube, we can also see. Now we don't, it's an Unreal Engine bug. Now, I want to make your life really easy. Go to window, then find the environment light mixer and from here you're gonna find some buttons all you need to do is to click very fast so we have skylight we have atmospheric light we have sky atmosphere volumetric cloud height fog and that's it that's how you make lighting in unreal engine for your, all your projects interior project interior project whatever it is this is the most basic lighting you can start from The basic controls are the following. Right click to look around. If you click nothing on your keyboard and you just simply right click, you will be able to look around. If you release the mouse, the mouse cursor will appear again. So I'm gonna right click again. I will be looking around as I'm moving my mouse. If you left click, you'll be able to move forward and backward. And if you look left and right, you'll be able to look left and right. In order for you to go up and down, whether you're right clicking or left clicking, is to press on Q and E. 
So I'm right clicking now and holding the mouse button and I'm gonna click on Q to go down and I'm gonna click on E to go up and ASDW to move around. I'm holding right click now and pressing ASDW to move around, to fly around. And if I release my mouse and press on ASDW, as you can see, things are happening here but not going up and down. Make sure you right click or left click and hold. Now, when you select an actor and press on F, that will focus that actor for you in the view. And if you hold Alt and press with your left mouse button, you will orbit around that actor. And if you press Alt and press on the right mouse button, you will dolly zoom in and out. And as you can see, it's very easy to navigate. Another quick tip, if you double click on any actor in the outliner, you can also quickly navigate to that actor. One important tip is the camera speed. Here, if you look, we have these controls here on the right corner. You can see camera speed. You can change the camera speed from here if you prefer, or you can scroll down as you are moving. So when you hold right mouse button or left mouse button and scroll up and down, you can change the speed of the camera and that will give you more freedom instead of going here and changing the speed. Let's talk about the rest of the buttons here. If you click here, maximize or restore the viewport you will see four other viewports and let's just press f on all of them when i'm moving in any of these orthographic views is just helping and usually it can be helpful if you want to use it so we have that here we have the camera speed from here and from here we have snapping options for transform for rotation and for the scale here we have select select and move select and rotate and select and scale it's your typical three axes x y and z so if you click in the middle you can scale the actor on the three axes at once and one of them will just do one of them and as you can see here in the scale on the right in the details panel you can do that as well and you can do the same for rotation if you want to rotate the actor on the x or y or the z and you can press on e to select and rotate objects and you can do that from here as well wow look at this stuff is so cool then press on w to select and move so i'm going to the content browser and i will go to add and i will click on add feature or content pack and I will go to content and I will set the starter content. That's how we can add the starter content if you didn't enable it from the start. Then you're gonna see new folder and this folder will be called starter content. And here you can see many other folders I have that you may not have. These folders are from marketplace assets, from the marketplace once you buy an asset or add it to your account can add it to project then select that project say this or this then add it to the project the starter content is the same to differentiate this to make it easy for me to see this folder i will right click and i will set a color and i will give it a nice beautiful purple and i will go to architecture i will add a floor so click and drag if you're wondering how do i have the content browser here you can press ctrl space for the content browser and duck it in the layout like so and usually it can be like here perhaps and then you cl can click and release to make it very similar experience to you i'm gonna press just ctrl space and now select my folder easily then go to whatever i want from here and let's say i will go to preps i can add a nice chair I can add a nice couch, I can add a nice table, and so on. And uh, these stairs, if I want to make them more fun, I would press on R to scale, and I will scale on the X, like so, and the Y, like so. Perhaps we can do the same for the floor. Click here on these two axes and scale it like this, and let's do this. Now, this chair, I can click and move it here, and I can move it on the Z axis, I can press F, to focus my selection and move it slowly. Now there are many ways to do this. The easier way is I simply press Ctrl space and add the chairs again and it will be easily snapped on the surface. But let's say, hey, you don't want, like when you move this here, you want for the chair to move on the top. Well, you can thank me later or in the comments by clicking on the icon here and enable surface snapping. Okay, this is enabled now. This is a little tricky to get used to. 
you want to select the axis in this case we have this surface and it's normal they're facing up so in order for us to snap this actor on this surface on the z axis we want to select the x and y so if i select these here now and i have this snapping surface surface snapping enabled look what happens it will snap to any surface like this if i move it on top of the chair it will snap to the normals of the chair or the couch and it will look funny but we don't want it funny so let's put it here maybe we can make it a little funny later it's okay and let's hold alt click on one of these axes to duplicate our asset press on e to enable rotation and rotate it now i've decided to change my mind put this sofa or couch in the place of the chairs so i will select the chairs and then press on w and press on the these axes and just move them wherever i like let's say here okay select this i'll move it here then maybe select this press alt to make a duplicate put one here hold alt to make a duplicate the same here let's make a chair statue make it small and cute let's make inception a small chair maybe smaller it's very cute nice very good chair select the table do this snap the table on the table press this r and scale down and move your mouse left or right to scale up and down and you may have these enabled so i'm going to enable the snapping options and you will see different snapping now if you look at the numbers here for easier control i will disable snapping on the scale and simply just do this put it here and as you can see on the grid it's set to 10 units so now this will move 10 units every time i move it maybe i don't want this so i can change the snap size to other type of units so now it's one unit or maybe you don't want to enable snapping at all and look here you can move it wherever you want sometimes you want to enable snapping so i'm gonna show you something i'm gonna click and drag look at the chair it's like the numbers maybe you don't want this maybe you are the type of person like me with ocd and you hate these numbers right so in this case you want snapping to be enabled let's enable it let's drag the same chair oh look at this by mistake and now click and drag and you can see 702 273 and 141 now if i change the snap size to 100 you guess what will happen 800 100 100 anytime you click and drag it will be snapped to the closest grid place press on g and now you can see the grid g will toggle game mode okay and now i'm gonna switch the snap size to 10 and you can see the grid is much smaller and you might ask Yahya, what do you mean 10 what do you mean one what, what is this well in unreal engine every one unit equals one centimeter so 100 units it's one meter 100 centimeters i'm gonna show you something let's press Control space and let's find any sort of uh, unit here so here wall 500 by 500 we can click and drag and this will be snapped to here and we can count one two three four and five that's five meters and this is where snapping is extremely important if i want to create another wall to bring it here it will be easy for me to put it in the world but this is funny so let's do that again here perhaps there we go let's try that again see if that's possible it looks like you need to be close to the object ah, we need to let me disable surface snapping for once and try again all right there we go you need like to move your mouse very close to the object until it snap now this could be so much harder if we don't have the snapping on or we have it like on different units so now if i want to move it as you can see they are now intersecting if we can go here it's they're still snapping to the grid but not as we want now you might wonder how the hell did he do this okay let's talk about this corner 
In this corner, we have the burger menu, we have the perspective view, which is the 3D view, and then we have the orthographic views, the 2D views, then we have the viewport type. Cinematic is one of the most exciting types of viewports in Unreal Engine because we can get to do this, but it's not today. And now let's go back to the default viewport. Please don't get sad, let's learn the basics and we learn cinematics soon. These here, as you can see, they have shortcuts. I'm a lazy person. Alt J is too much for me to go to tab and it just doesn't make sense. I discovered this by complete coincidence where you hold control, middle mouse button, and as you can see, there is a white line. And if I move up like this, it will go to the tab. If I move left or right, it will go to back or front. If I move like below, like this, button, so up, and if you try the corners, try this corner on the tab, you will go to right. The corner on the tab right, you will go to left. And if you go to this corner or this corner, we'll switch back to perspective. The way we use this, I select this object, I press Ctrl, I hold middle mouse button, I move to tab, then I press F to focus selection and I move this wherever I want like this and then i hold control press middle mouse button move my mouse to corner switch back to perspective hold alt left click right click and that's how i navigate this is easy now next to that we have view modes right now we have a mode called let and with this mode we can see the end result we can see our materials we can see the light we can see the global illumination effects and we can see what everyone will see when they play our game oh look this is so cute if we decide to be curious and that's what i advise everyone and switch to unlet this is a mode where we see everything but without the effects of the lights that are placed in our project so we see the true color of every item on our viewport we have wireframe we have detailed lighting, we have lighting only, we have reflections, and we have many other modes that we will discuss in detail in future lessons. Next to that, we have show options. For example, if you do not want to see the grid, you can go here and go to grid and disable that. If you do not want to see the fog, you can go here and you can disable that. And the same for clouds. These we use for debugging reasons. So we can do that from here. Let's say you messed up something or you don't know what you've done. You can always go to use defaults and this will reset all things you've changed here to the default, which is very cool. Quick little tip on lighting. If you hold Ctrl L, you will see this here. So now I'm holding Ctrl L and I'm gonna move my mouse. You can see the light changes in real time. And it's funny, I've been using Unreal Engine for so long and Unreal 5 since it's released. And every time I see lighting like this, I get just so excited. So beautiful, it's always so beautiful. I can show you a sneak peek of what's coming in the next lessons. I'm looking at my list. We'll talk about materials, more about lighting, and we'll talk about importing assets. And I just bring them all and block them all out together. Believe it or not, this water is just one click away from the plugins. If you go to water, enable it, then here you will have to just search water, just get the water custom, for example, and look at that. So amazing stuff, hell yeah. So I hope you found this video useful because I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. And I hope I didn't forget anything for this tutorial. Bye bye.